Thanks very much, Sam. It is indeed time for match 22. Both of these teams unbeaten coming into this match. The Netherlands versus Italy. The world number one against the lowest ranked team here at the Vitality Hockey Women's World Cup. Teams are lined up in the tunnel. I should point out Italy are the only team coming into this round having not conceded a goal. I'm sure that might be different later today. They've got nothing to lose in this game. They're through to the crossover game. So too are the Netherlands, as everybody expected they would be. So the players make their way out now. And it will be a really special moment for the Italians. And you can see big smiles all around. They really do enjoy their hockey and being part of this tournament. There are a few Italian fans. Just got to look a little bit harder than you do for the Dutch in their bright orange. And before the national anthems, we will be having a presentation because it's Carleen Dirks van den Herbel's 200th appearance for the Netherlands. What a servant she has been. She's won gold or a medal in every tournament she's ever competed in. Also, she's won in every major tournament, she's won medals. But it will be now the national anthem of the Netherlands. see plenty of support for the Dutch and now time for the national anthem of Italy get you pumped up before a game I don't know what will wonderful scenes from Italy they love singing the national anthem and no doubt they will love taking on the world number one as we look at the lineups well Josin Koning gets her first start under the bar for the Netherlands in this match Colin van Marseker and Stam will get the nod starting in the back line but look out for Lidovai Velten Nunik as well in the midfield and Marlis Capels they've been lively throughout this tournament and then in the forward line, oh, there's so many choices. Luring and Jonker get the nod. Jonker playing her 150th game for the Netherlands today. And also Lauren Stam will be playing her 50th. Chirico, Martina Chirico will start under the bar for Italy. Tiddy, Wybarowska and Traverso have been key at the back. Pacina has been good on the flanks for Italy. Singh, Mirabella and Casale start in the midfield for them. 
but up front it's Bracconi, Grafaro and Pacella. Pacella, who we heard from Malclulu, has been really on fire in this tournament. Bracconi, well, you just can't give her a sniff because she will take that opportunity. There is Carleen Dirks van den Hervel. As I mentioned, gold in every major tournament. That is something for your trophy cabinet. Not many players get that. 200th appearance today. If you're ever looking for a bit of physio, go and see her in Amsterdam, because that's what she does as a full-time job. Chirico in goal, all smiles, but she may have a real testing time today. The ball has been placed on the centre spot by Lily Holmes from Clifton Ladies. And we're ready to get things underway. Netherlands to push back in their familiar orange strip. Italy in the blue. Whistle goes, played forward, straight out to the flank to Lidavai Velten. It's the return pass back. Good to see that she's got some supporters as well inside the crowd. I'm Ashley Morrison alongside me, three-time Olympian, and Great Britain and England goalkeeper Simon Mason. Simon, both these teams can relax and just enjoy this game. Well, I think possibly the Netherlands relax slightly more than Italy when you're in a situation like this. Yes, they have done absolutely brilliantly, but they know they're up against the world number ones who have been outstanding and exciting at times. And can the Italian midfield of Mirabella, of Singh, of Casala cope with the Dutch midfield? Ketels, Dirks van der Hervel, Velten and Nunink, which is a scary proposition for players of comparatively low experience this will be their big test they want to test themselves against the best teams and there's no better test than against the world number one it was Valentina Bracconi who said we raise our game against the teams ranked higher than us in the world well Italy to be fair gonna to have to really raise it today but they have shown great spirit certainly a wonderful team ethic and that's coming up to our commentary box. Big double touch. Technically, as a player tries to overhead, accelerate everything through it, give it a little bit too much, stick moves too fast, second touch. Always causes it to go on that angle. Casale. It's the free. Oh, no, she doesn't. Umpires for this match, Emi Yamada from Japan and Maggie Giddens from the USA. There's Emi Yamada. And up in the box, we've got Alison Keogh from Ireland. The question, Simon, will Italy just try and sit back and contain the Netherlands early on, or do you think they'll just play their normal game and just see what they can get? I think the beauty of this situation is they can afford to just play their normal game because that then allows them to carry on to the later stages with that the momentum and the understanding that they've practiced what they're best at it doesn't make a blind bit of difference whether they lose this by one ten win by one or ten it's just about carrying forwards into the next stages for them it will be italy who will play either england india or the usa in the crossover games we still don't know those matches will be decided this afternoon It'll be whoever comes third in Paul B as Velton steals possession, helped forward brilliantly by Van Keffen. Into the circle, good block coming from Traverso. Strong challenges from Italy, and they're not holding back inside the circle. Another good intercept. That was from Casale. Casale again, trying to help out. Down the side it goes. Bracconi, well. It was a real size difference there. Colin no, got the decision. You admire that from Italy. You asked actually would they play their normal game and they've tried to play that ball, work that ball out from the back pocket. Into the circle it goes, it's rolled loose. Good defending in the end. Well, it looked as if it was going to be a certain shot for Lidemai Velter. It's a long corner now to the Netherlands. Sally again involved straight away. Forced back, three Dutch players forcing her back towards the circle. Did well, and Tassina, well, a miscommunication there. 
Just gives away the corner. Van Heffen plays on with it quickly. Van Herbel hit to that on to the right hand side. Bocconi couldn't quite reach it, was at full stretch. Comes across to Colin. Defence so far from Italy, not allowing the Netherlands players to turn. Tiddy, the player, doing the good work and then giving away to Bracconi. Bracconi also drawing the foul. And Chiara Tiddy just walking forward calmly, just slowing the pace down. Well, the, the, the defensive work she was doing is a, is a lot harder work than people perceive because she was staying mobile. She's on the balls of her feet, dancing left to right. It's this really short, sharp shuttle to deny an option for the attacker to go either off each shoulder of her. And doing so, just then needs a moment to recover. And Heffern intercepts that one. And it's going to be stolen back by Pazella. Ruggieri, her pass was read brilliantly. By Kitty Van Marla. Italy have one possession back. Good play again from Marcella Casale. Carries it forward, stolen off her. And at the moment, all of the play has been between the two 22 metre lines. Well, oh, Zandervaart doing well coming in off the substitutes bench, seeing the opportunity to jab in and run the ball away. But in doing so, across the pitch, came to a, a left flank. There was no other orange shirts anywhere near her. For the circle, wonderful pass. Good defending again from Italy. And the foul committed by the Netherlands. Well, Oviedo put her arm up, but Dirks van den Hervel plays on quickly. Dirks van den Hervel just bumped off the ball by Casali, gets a free hit for the Netherlands. Gets the ball quickly on the ball patrol. Italy fans find their voice. I say the Argentina fans yesterday have still got my vote. Best fans of the tournament so far. And that's been lifted on defence by Kai Van Marsaka. I have a feeling, actually, that the 10,500 person crowd who are due to come in this evening might contest that claim that the 100 or so Argentinians down by that commentary box or a better crowd than they will be later. They certainly made more noise. We've had 10,000 in before for England, but they've been very quiet. And very their polite. team needs them to support them. I agree completely, absolutely. Cena approaching the halfway point of the first quarter. No goals, no real shooting opportunities as yet from either side. Nebraska. It's Roberto Carta, the coach of Italy. Hails from Cagliari in Sardinia. And two Scudetti in 2014 and 15 as the Gerda plays it in. Maybe a touch from Federica Malta and just oh. bouncing off her was Traverso. How has she not got that free hit? No, backstick, actually. Backstick in the very first instance. That, however, if there hadn't been the initial backstick, pretty certain would have been penalised. Matlab really sent Traverso flying. Back again to Andanassim. Colin. Backs that towards the goal, but oh, wide the near post. Well, so that's an unusual unforced error from the Netherlands because Cole had all the time she wanted and there wasn't even a, a forward rush into that space. You normally see out the corner of an eye, somebody running with some real aggression and intensity. Here come the Netherlands now, now. A little bit of trouble, Zandavar, top of the circle. Brilliantly tackled by Sacchino. Piara Tiddy looks to play on. Good pass, finds Carta. Carta, though, heavy touch from her. She just state no relation to the coach. There's no nepotism in Italy. Good pass forward. Ketels, cross the face of goal. 
was a brilliant opportunity and a really good chance. But Kitty Van Mara, I think, was trying to square it. Well, it's just a touch, and then she just try and punch her right hand through that. Whatever she was trying to do, had the opportunity. That's that's the potential for a goal shot from that angle. Stolen back now, and a good run into the circle by the Furda. It's gone in. Well, at the back post, and applause from Alison Annan. There was nobody there a few minutes ago. There was this time. Well, just look at the passenger play from the initial steal. The jab is away, and then it just becomes one pass laid in, third pass across, and tap in. A reaching finish in the end, but just the instinctive movement, the understanding to put it into the dangerous area means the acceleration onto the ball can just get that reaching touch for Frederic Matler to get another goal, her third in the course of this tournament, to open the Netherlands scoring. So ten minutes gone, Italy get their first. Just looked like it was coming moments before. Luring now bursting forward, Matler in front of goal, she's in the same position, good trap in front of goal by Wybaralska. Carter now carries forward, evades De Gerda, manages to get the pass to Oviedo, she's got Ruggieri outside her, looks to play the short pass, Ruggieri strong in the tackle, gets possession, plays on, looks to play it in, and a penalty corner goes Italy's way. from Italy. Uh, Ruggiero finding the pass in. That stick tackle is what was penalised. Mid on Midabella. The look of confusion on the Dutch defence to why it had been given. Empire Yamada clearing her signal. Chiara Tiddy and Sacchino wait at the top of the circle. Tiddy, you would think, would be the preferred option. They, in fact, go to Sacchino. Looking for just a tap and so close to getting that on goal. That was not that far away. Federica Carter at the back post. Well, a complete miss flick off the top. It's never under any degree. The sticks roll over the ball. Goalkeeper's gone at it hard, but the touch is in front of her kicker. Watching that replay, it almost looked as if it came off a Dutch stick as well before it went over the line, but maybe it was off the outside of the goal. 16 was given. Stamp, who's playing her 50th cap for the Netherlands today. Active board up off the Italian stick. Belton couldn't get it, she'll come back and fight for it now. As Carter combines with Mirabella. Cena tries the aerial, but it didn't come off, and Belton got that rather easily. Yonker plays a short pass. Nice easy turn for Van Keffen. Well, that situation moments ago, I don't understand when Italy have battled so hard for possession, but they haven't actually cut through any of the Dutch lines, so they've not got numbers behind their opponent's defensive lines. They then go to the overhead and it's in con into congested space. The overhead was executed badly, but that's fairly irrelevant. The decision to go there in the first place, you have to question. In at the back for the Netherlands by Alan Stamp. First stick from Keffen, but Tiddy will pick that up for Italy in the defensive line. And it started to go with her and then changed her mind. In field, it comes Casale, a heavy touch, giving it away into the D. For the, well, what a tackle! Absolute brilliant tackle from Wybaralska. Had to be. Looked as if Luring was sure to score. Well, here they go, the opportunity. Vibanowska just reaches in and across and gets a tiny touch. Moments before that, the shot could have been rattled against the backboard of Chirico's goal. Yeah. 
Nuning. Is it back? Nuning, who came into the tournament with her little bit of a head over her hamstring. She'd be fit enough, but St. Adam was convinced that she wanted it. Luckily, that rolled through for Sacchino. Strong challenge again coming in from Phoenix. Velton, space at the top of the D. Chirico, a brilliant save. A good clearing up at the back from Pacina. Stunning goalkeeping. Red of it. Hemmed in on the side. She's done well there. And it has been stolen in the end by the Dutch. Oh, for a short goalkeeper, she has to go full on launch to her left, which I'm sure we'll see in a minute. There's an absolutely brilliant extension. Here come the Dutch save. again, though. Into the circle they go. And looking for a foot, they peel for it. And they will get the penalty corner now. We see the previous shot on the backhand, cut through the ball there. Look at that extension from Chirico to get out to her left-hand side. Gets a full extender glove on it. Well, this may well be the biggest test for a goalkeeper that is fairly short, Kai Van Marseke. May well fire it high. 12 seconds. And Anasim waits, and the second battery. Marseke at the first. In it goes to Marseka. She went high, she went to the left, and it went into the goal. The Netherlands have a second. There was nothing Chirico could do on that occasion. A brilliantly executed penalty corner. Actually, you call it. It's out, it's clean. The number one runner hasn't got anywhere near that. Goalkeeper unsighted. Look at the line of the defensive runner right down the barrel. But Marva Marseka gets it across. The number one runner opens her wrist up there. It's that little open of the stick. The right hand slows down as the left hand accelerates there. That's the whip that opens up the goal. The goalkeeper, Chirico, can't even see the ball. And if she could, she wouldn't have got there anyway. It just seemed the obvious place to go. And you have the keeper, like Martina Chirico. Here come the Netherlands again, Zanderbar. Feeds Lidavai Belton, but she just couldn't bring it under control. Much to her own frustration. Italy now being hemmed in as the Netherlands really put pressure on them as they look to continually play out of defence. Salek saying Bracconi was too far up the pitch. She wanted her closer for that pass. Well, I understand they want to play out, actually, but the, the two areas that they're playing from that are causing them trouble are the half-back positions, particularly at right half. They're then playing this diagonal ball to centre midfield, more often than not with a little bit of a skip, and it's so high risk. Sacchino with a foul on Devart. Bobbling into the deep, Chirico kicks it clear. In the corner, they may just have time. Can they get it inside the deep? And Heffen on the reverse, good block initially, still alive, and it just goes past the far post. And the hooter goes for the end of the first quarter. Kaya van Marseke getting a second goal for the Netherlands. Alison Annan waiting with a clean board down there. It is Netherlands 2, Italy now. Everyone would have expected the Netherlands to start well, and they did. They stole possession around the circle. It was a great break into the deep. Across it came, and Federica Matler at the back post made it 1-0. Well, the turnover was a great jab, and then it's just the how quickly the passes go. That first time reverse ball, delightful across the circle for Matler to extend and touch in. And then the penalty corner is stopped clean, and Van Massica, absolutely perfect execution. The first runner, number 15 for Italy, completely obscuring the vision of Chirico. Sacchino it was who's causing her to not see the ball.
However, this was an opportunity that didn't go in for the Dutch. It was a beautiful move. Backhand shot. That is a fantastic save. World-class quality from Chirico. The extension and the launch. Big left-hand save, but the body movement, superb. Rika Matler, the scorer of the first goal. She's now got 25 goals in 43 matches, which is pretty good as we go pitch side to Krista Cullen. Alison, so it's been pretty much one-way traffic so far. Are we going to expect much the same, and is it about being clinical here? No, look, I'm not happy about the first uh, quarter. I, didn't, I don't think we're sharp enough. I think there's a few, few elements of our game that aren't good enough, and I've just asked them to go out there and sharpen up a bit. Uh, there's, you know, no one for a corner push-out, no one for a, in, the, in the corner defence. We have to be sharper. And on that corner itself, a good execution on what has been quite a tricky pitch so far for people scoring corners. Yeah, I'm really happy for Kay. She's, been, she's done her homework and she's done well to get put that one the first one away. Thanks, Elsie. Yeah. Thanks, Krista. Restart from the Netherlands and Bracconi picks up now. Bracconi tries to weave away forward, gets a free hit and there may be a card. In fact, there is. Sana Colin, a couple of minutes on the side. Netherlands down to 10. Well, There's a heavy touch in the tackle, it just wasn't clean, and because of the nature of the attack, it looked like it could be a breakdown play as well. Here come Italy once more, Bianchi, edge of the circle, Casale, in she goes, can she get a shot away, Zandavard, brilliant defence, into the foot it goes, of oh, Lauren Stamp. It's a penalty corner to Italy. Brilliant battling from Casale in the circle. Pulls it back to right foot to just get enough space to get the ball on goal to the push shot. Takes the top edge. Italy have worked good penalty corner routines. A wide on the right hand side, out of vision. You have Bracconi. Will she cut in for the tip in? Tiddy has gone to the second battery. Sacchino at the first. As to Sacchino, play to the injector. And appeals for another penalty corner. Long corner has been given by Emi Yamada. Italy feel it should be another penalty corner, and I think you know, Tiddy may refer yes, this. So. Well, they're trying to talk to yeah. each other. They need to make Sorry, a really clear you. signal rather than chatting. Support umpire, if you can't hear anything, get your arms up, in my opinion. Out, stop dead. Sacchino again just tries to pull around it, gets that touch back the injector and it's the bottom edge that lifts it dangerously. So Garafo again to inject for Italy. This time they go to Chiara Tiddy. She cracks it, she scores! Italy have got a goal against the world number one. And that'll be a goal Chiara Tiddy will remember for a very long time. So too will those fans. Well, Clulo, Kate Richardson Walsh have talked about how well Tiddy slaps a ball, and that is an absolute rocket. She's pulled everything through it, just a tiny little bit of extra hands to whip round or there, pulls through to find the bottom corner. It's got the, the lightest of skips off the turn, but the power. And well, that will buoy Italy's confidence. Great response at the start of the second quarter. Alison Annan wasn't happy before. I'm sure that won't make her too happy. She would have wanted her team to keep a clean sheet. I do believe, Simon, from my searching back, trying to find when these two teams have played, that's the first time Italy have scored against the Netherlands. Oh, to be fair, actually, if you've searched it out, I won't be questioning that as being incorrect, stating that's incorrect. I sometimes wonder where all of your statistics come from. Absolutely great knowledge, mate. Well, look, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99% sure. Regardless of whether it is or whether it isn't, it was a perfectly well-executed corner anyway. Testament to Italy's confidence that they're happy to play the ball around. Dutch not stepping out particularly aggressively on their press, just holding a half court with one player doing shuttles at front point. Good anyway, pass though, some of them give possession away. Now a chance to turn by Matler. And the 
Netherlands slowly push numbers upfield. Stamp back after her little sojourn on the two minute chair. Van Kaffen cracks that one in, it deflected up off a. I thought it was off an Italian well, I, stick into the body of Matla. You know, Matla hasn't, has chosen not to refer that. This is one of those games you don't really worry about. Giving him so much time, it's cracked in. It does indeed. It's off an Italian stick. I think you, I think you could have taken that refer if you wanted to. Netherlands not bothered at this moment in time. Okay. And penalised. Yankee goes back to her captain, Tiddy, and Tiddy is closed out. We're just literally running straight into her, was Lauren Luring. You can play. Apparently, she's a player that just cannot sit still when she's not playing, Lauren Luring. You've got to give Italy credit for a limited amount of possession four circle entries they've got four shots away and three penalty corners and very well on their conversion rate so far Uwe de Gerda carries forward still going sit forward good defense coming back this time from Jasbir Singh and Jerry she's got plenty of pace on that short pass to Oviedo Sally through the gap she goes Oh, what a lovely little reverse layoff. Viedo with the reverse layoff. Lovely pass from her. She's had a brilliant tournament for Italy. Just stolen at the back again, though, by the Netherlands. Nobody really forward, though. So, to go. Well, here we see this little layoff. Brilliant for Viedo. Cuts in, dumps behind, and continues the run. Look, she's looking back towards the ball to get the return. Marlis Kettles fires the ball into the top of the circle. And the free hit goes Italy's way. Once again, Lurik enjoying the physical contest. Actually, just moments ago, we saw you talked about the Netherlands not really have any forward options, but the concern for me for Italy was their recovering, recovering defence was really quite slow and hesitant. And you can't have that in a game like this with that Dutch midfield four or five. Oviedo now, desperate challenge, she avoids that, but tries to dink it round the back. Determination to get there, and a long corner won by Italy as the ball went off. Arin van der Nassen. This has been a very positive start to the third quarter by Italy. Didn't quite get that past the first defender. Agata Wybarowska. Great movement, look at that ball control. Hands are high on the stick. Oh, um, cut well, out. Tiddy intercepted that, but it's been stolen back. And the shot, Chirico parries it away to prevent Carlin Dirks van den Hervel celebrating a 200th game with a goal. Well, Dirks van den Hervel will know absolutely she's mishit that hideously. He's taken the top off it like a boiled egg. Seen you that aggressive with a boiled egg. Trying to play out now from defences. Dinaradova. To Stam. Well, here we see the miss hit. Just standing up off it. Look at the shoulders. They just pick up at the end. She's hit the top of the ball. Easy for Chirico. What a bit of play it was before that from Kitty Van Marle. Across the face a goal, and in it goes. Kelly Yonker gets a goal to celebrate her 150th match. It's one of those goals that Kelly Yonker pops up with so frequently. Perfectly placed to just tap it home. Well, the run along the baseline is a great open hand and slap and a beautiful first time deflection, then allowing the ball to go across the body. Carries in, eyes are up all the time. Steps up, Yonka pops it inside near post. Chirico steps there, that opens it up, and Yonka, open hands, plays across. Really well executed, finish from a skipped ball. That's a great touch with a narrow angle. 
Traverso caught up in the Dutch celebrations. You won't see that happen too often. Well, that was brilliant. The replay there, you saw the run of Kelly Yonka as she peeled away at the edge of the circle and then just drifted in in front of the defender. Absolutely brilliant awareness by her, and the Italian defence just didn't go with her. Also, Margot van Geffen, as she carried that ball from the very first moment, had her eyes up, she knew where it was. De Gerda now into the circle, good defence from Vinarava. Italy bring it into danger because coming back was Lidovi Velten, and she's stolen possession back for the Netherlands. Suddenly, maybe there's a message came from the bench because it looks as if the Dutch have just lifted the tempo a little bit. Well, if we, if we make the assumption that Alison Allen was reasonably confident they could get a result out of this game, it'll be interesting to see whether she set different objectives for quarters, whether she wants the Netherlands to play as hard as they possibly can all the way through, whether they'll take their foot off the gas physically. Lots of different tactical decisions to make when you start to get a degree of ascendancy. The Netherlands certainly have an ascendancy when it comes to scoring goals in this tournament. That is their 17th goal, and this is just their third match. No one coming close. Spain having 10 at the moment. As Valton looks to play on, Pacino was in the way, but withdrew because she was within the five metres. Valton couldn't get it inside the circle, was looking to try and feed it forward as she comes back now and puts Tiddy under pressure. So too does Zandavard. No, surely not. Surely not. Pacino has been given a card for not being fired when she tried to do everything she possibly could to run away from that free hit. She knew she was within a metre or two when it was taken, and she literally ran in the opposite direction to the ball carrier. I have to agree, I think that is incredibly harsh. She made no challenge to tackle and tried to get out of the way. Harsh. So just to clarify, that's where the free it was. Pacina's just running in a straight line. She's run now out of shot to get out of Velton's way. To pass forward again for the Netherlands. In it comes to Aga van Heffen. Jonker and her combining well. Zandavard looking for Jonker. Jonker evades one, still going. Brilliant defence again from Chiara. Tiddy clears it at the back for Italy. Well, Tiddy dancing off her toes to get her body round. Had to completely rotate her hips to get that ball away. And it comes pulled underneath. That's a great bit of movement from Yonker. Now watch Tiddy come into this. Jumps off one foot, then the other. Rotates. Good contact and eyes up. Yeah, Tiddy would know these players fairly well. Haven't played at Campong in the Netherlands. As the wind picks up and Marseke plays it wide to the Nassim. And then gets the return pass. Just under five minutes till half-time. Good oh. save again from Chirico to deny Zandavart, but it rebounds into her own player. Penalty corner for the Netherlands. What a pass. That's the re a brilliant replay, but the pass itself that went to the top of the circle for Zandavart to pick it. Here it comes. Watch this come through in the contact point. There, one touch. Absolutely beautiful to then get the shot away. Stunning bit of individual skill. Poetry in motion. And Vanessa at the first battery, and Marseka at the second. Lidovai Belton to inject. In fact, it wasn't, it was Katie's, my apologies. It's gone wide this time. Well, out to the top. Long pull in, open wrist again, identical, but she's just got under that. You can see the ball travel up. The stick slides underneath it fractionally as it whips away. Not as much contact as the one that she scored from. The hit goes Italy's way. Played on quickly by Mirabella. Mirabella. See now back to their 11. After what we felt was a rather harsh card. 
Breaks forward for Matler again. Matler tries to get a shot. And you're going to see another card, I'm afraid, for Italy. So, Italy 15. 15. Maria Sacchino is the player sent to the bin. And the Netherlands with another penalty corner. Well, it's Tiddy's, Tiddy's foot in the circle that gives away the penalty corner. The green card was earlier in the sequence of play, but Tiddy doing all that she can. Martina Chirico has it all to do again. And Marseca again lines up. Will they stick with her or will they use Van der Nassen? They use Van der Nassen. It's deflected, a great deflection. Margot van Heffen, ideally placed, just lifting it past Chirico. Big smile on her face and the coach's face. Netherlands 4, Italy 1. It changes all of your lines, you've changed your castle, you've gone for straight flicks, this opens up the si that side, because the number one runner veers left, it opens up the pull round the body, the tipping chance from Margot van Geffen, there isn't a defender within three or four metres of her, she can lay a stick and focus on the contact, opens the blade, unstoppable. And they do make it look very, very easy, the world number one. You've got to say, it makes it so much easier to sequence corners if you've got a flicker who's gone to a particular area from a specific castle. The defence will then be naturally focused on that to some degree. And when you change your angles, it means you can go to the other side of the goal, and that is the outcome. And Marseka had been at the first batch, he shifted to the second. And that made all the difference. Italy have to just show their spirit, as we said, there's nothing to lose. They're already through to the crossover match, is already going to come second in the pool. So they can just express themselves. And the crowd are far from happy with that decision. And Yamada may well smile. Etels picks up now on the flank, plays a good pass forward. Luring in she goes, lays it across in front of goal. It is going to be another goal, and it is 5-1 now to the Netherlands. It was just all too easy as the space opened up. Good pass down the left, laid across, and an easy finish at the back post. See, they exploited that space yet again. The ball played in down that base on the reverse, chopped across to such a straightforward finish in the end from Van Mahler. She puts that into an empty net, but there really needs to be more attention. The reverse from Lurink on that leading edge in simple first touch. Probably wanted to try and put it in first time, and even the second touch wasn't the cleanest of finishes. But Van Mahler with a goal at her mercy. Just another one in the record books for her. She, no one will remember how she put it in. A miss from Traverso. The Netherlands really have lifted the tempo in this second half of the second quarter. Into the shins it goes. Free hit to them again. Matla over the ball. Back to Andersen. Stamp. Short little pass. Lovely turn coming from Nunning. Oh, look at the width that they've got. The movement of players to create the angles. They've got people on the baseline. Full width across the pitch. One pass. Nunink again collects just the short pass. She There's a foot in there, sure, yeah. Decision goes Italy's way. I've got to say, actually, you just want Italy now to retain a degree of focus. It's really easy to start to feel that everything is against you. They've done brilliantly to get to this point in the competition. They now just need to trust in their skills and try and use this game 
to have a positive outcome on their structure and their patterns and their behaviours and not lose focus. You mentioned how well they've done. They're the only team outside the top 16 to have qualified for the World Cup. And 17 in the world. Here come the Netherlands again. Van Heffen finds a foot. And it will be another penalty corner to the Netherlands. Well, you can see how the Netherlands' pressure has ramped up. The Italians had rolled out three penalty corners before the Netherlands had any. Now, Netherlands have gone past that with their fourth. And this is their fifth, and they've scored three goals so far. Of course, coming into today, the they've just got one from 11. Surprisingly, the Netherlands They're really up the ante today. Stamm is at the second battery this time. Van den Assem at the first. Comes to Stamp, she slaps it, looking for the deflection. And a stroke has been awarded as the ball went into the body of Wybarowska. Well, they're going team referral, deflection Ali? perceived to be going. I don't can know how you can uh, think that's that not a penalty a stroke. stroke. The goalkeeper's nowhere okay, near check. it. They're asking the question, saying their goalkeeper was behind the line of it. She's absolutely nowhere near. Alison Keogh from Ireland is the umpire that will have to make this decision. So the ball slapped outside. There's no issue there. That's a straightforward deflection from outside the attacking right-hand post. Takes a touch into the defender, straight at line to goal. The only thing they could argue is that they're going over the crossbar because it's hit her that high from that angle, but. I don't think there's anything that's going to show that. For me, with the goalkeeper where she is, that's a penalty stroke, nailed on. Federica Matler, the player, trying to deflect it towards goal. Maggie, yes. I have a decision for you. Okay. The ball is going across goal, so start with a penalty corner okay. and Italy keep their referral. Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah. How? I, I, somebody's going to have to tell me how that's a corner and not a penalty stroke. Well, the video umpire feeling that was going across the goal, not towards the goal. Seriously? OK. Fine, if that's the interpretation they've seen. Um, yeah. So we'll do it again. This time they go to Irene van den Assem straight into the first runner, and it will be another retake. Brave running from Pasina to get her feet anywhere near that. Out, stop clean. Pasina getting as close as she can. That's really brave because she has to adjust to run into the line of that flick. She's starting wide between the castles to give her a chance of going left or right. Kitty van Marla to inject. They go to Stamm again. She hits that, but she hits it wide of the goal. Chiara Tiddy on that left post, happy to just see that across her feet. Out and stop, rolled in to give the shooting chance. Hits through it, gets a little bit of a lift. Chiara Tiddy knows that's going wide. And Italy took their time just to run down the clock as we're in the final 30 seconds of the first half. It's been a Impressive first half from the Netherlands. You would expect that from the world number one. And just killing time is Chiara Tiddy. And the hooter will go now, and that is the end of the first half. Well, Italy have shown plenty of spirit, but there have been plenty of goals for the Netherlands. And that's why they're dancing in the aisles. Matler opened the scoring in the 10th minute, Van Marsecker, and then Tiddy pull one back for Italy, but then three goals in the second quarter means at half-time it's Netherlands 5, Italy 1, as we go down to Krista Cullen with Kelly Yonker. Kelly, great goals there from you. Personally scored one, but then the goals seem to be in running. There seems to be momentum shifts now. You guys seem to be eager. Yeah, I think uh, we started not good. 
uh, but uh, we picked it up uh, in the second quarter and uh, we're very effective in the circle so that's good but we uh, have to pick it up and speed up in the, in the second half and you've had a number of penalty corners the first one was really effective after that it's been a little wayward yeah it is so hopefully we get more corners so we can uh, score some goals because uh, we really need it too and uh, but uh, it's good that we get the, the corners but now uh, we have to finish them thank you so much you're welcome Thank you very much, Sam. Well, Alison Allen has been rotating the goalkeepers, and she's done it again. So Wienendahl will start under the bar in the second half for the Netherlands, who, in their huddle, were dancing to the Proclaimers. And I have to say, the points go to Margot van Heffen and Lidewey Velten for the best movers. Italy push back and get the second half underway. Give possession away immediately. And here come the Netherlands, Zandavar. Good defence in the end, takes a tumble and the whistle goes for a penalty corner just as the shot was coming from Zandavar. Well, Zandavar battling hard from Jasbir Singh, trying to get rid of the ball, but it falls unkindly for the Italian midfielder. The corner was given for danger, we heard the umpire say. Kekel's down at the baseline to inject, but Marseka is at the second battery. Italy finally ready, cutting it a little bit fine in the 40 seconds. Comes to Van Marseka, looks for a deflection, it will come out and into the goal it goes. And Dirks van den Herbel does get that goal she was looking for on a 200th appearance for the Netherlands. It really is a party that they're all joining in. And Martina Chirico looking rueful and upset in her goal. Nothing she could have done. The flick that comes to the top out. It takes a foot. You can see the hobbling there and falls kindly. Good umpiring advantage to allow Van der Herbel to just knock it in on the reverse stick. It pops kindly. Could have been blown for the foot in the circle. Does well with an open blade off the bobbling ball to just knock that past Tiddy's left shoulder into the far corner. She did make that look extremely easy. And it doesn't look as if the Netherlands are going to sit back. They are coming out and they mean business. And the Italian fans continue to support their team. There's Marcella Casale, looks to get over halfway. One of the great things, Simon, about this tournament is not only the performance of the lesser nations, your Ireland's, your Italy's, you know, they've all performed superbly in this tournament, got through to the next round, but it's just the new fans you're seeing around hockey, people watching the game, talking about it. And they're enjoying some of the unpredictability as well. It just shows there's suddenly there's new faces. Yes, there's still all of that, the, the energy and the power and the excitement of the game, but suddenly you just get an added dimension and interest globally. Those teams closing that gap. Absolutely. Roberto Carta, I'm sure he won't be too upset. He would have known it was going to be a tricky game against the world number one, but he'll just want his team to be carrying out the disciplines that he's asked them to do in this match. Wybarowska goes back to Tiddy. Zandavard put pressure on. And Velton comes to Casale. 
where if you ever wanted to see mixed emotions on a man's face, the last 30 seconds of their pool game. Jasbir Singh picks up in space, gets the chance to advance, looks to cut in. She's done well. Coming back, though, was a good tackle from Van Heffen. Feeds it forward into Ketels, and again she finds Zandavard. What a beautiful change of direction. Another card issue, just time, a yellow card to Dalia Mirabella. So five minutes on the side, and Italy down to ten. Was that deliberate, or is Zandavard just absolutely outskilled her? I thought it was just brilliant skill and just completely outplayed her. Zandavart's change of direction. Here we see it as she takes this and just touches it inside. No change of direction that the defender can cope with. Comes back across. Yeah, it's not pretty. Uh, the, 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 the raised right hand and the elbow, to be fair, is what would have drawn the card. Another penalty corner, though, for the Netherlands. again doing the injecting and Marseco's moved this time to the first battery what have they got up their sleeve this time those two Van Marseco straight into the first runner Traverso who's hit the deck picked up though by Zandavart into the D it comes trying to create some space was littered by Velt deflected wide Jonka so close to a second Oh, I'll get a critical head on because that's the number one runner who's that's hit the body at the top of the circle. He's gone all the way out towards the corner flag for the perceived advantage. I think a majority of coaches, you'd struggle to get people who would suggest that they didn't want a reward at the top of the circle rather than the ball rolling away towards the corner flag. Absolutely. These two, Italy's only played in one World Cup before in 1976, and they did meet in that World Cup. And it was also in Pool A. And the Netherlands won that 5 0. Same margin at the moment, five goal difference. But you do feel that that might blow out as the game continues. Well, you do, but in that first pool game, they scored five in what, the first 23 minutes? And they only went on to get seven in the whole game, so. Certainly, you've got to wait and see. Oviedo gets a free hit. She's been kept quiet by the Netherlands. I think it's just been that link play hasn't been able to find her. Traverso really stuck for options there. Well, Italy, they need to keep playing forwards, keep being positive. Yeah. They turn the. Sorry, Simon. As though still possession again, Zandavard again shows cases her skills. Lovely pass and the shot on the run. Unfortunately, Marlis Ketels can't hit the target. Well, look at the movement and then moving the body round, opening the blade of the stick to pop that in. So Lerding tries to play that past the left post. Too much on it. Apologies, Lerding, not Ketels. Thanks for correcting me, Simon. He's got my eight and six just looking at them upside down or the wrong way around. As you get older, you want bigger numbers, you know. Italy just need a spell with a little bit of possession, but at the moment, not being allowed any time on the ball. Federica Carta picks it up. Smashes that forward, Bracconi trying to turn, but strong challenge from Van Marseca. Bracconi eventually comes up with the ball, and Jasbir Singh, I think, won the free hit from the challenge from Van Marseca. Great take from Bracconi, wasn't it? Down that left hand side, it was the pick that was dead and then pulled inside. Yonker, that was brave to get in the way of that from Wybaralska. She got possession, and again, the free hit goes. Uh, Italy are questioning that and the umpires told Tiddy to keep quiet but she is the captain surely she's allowed to question a decision 
Maybe because she did it in the very demonstrative, emotional way Italians do. That's why Emi Yamada was saying, just calm down. Trying to steal Dirks van den Hervel under pressure from Jasbeer Singh. Gerda. Just checking her run was Zandavad to get out of the way of De Gerda, and that was a great pass forward into the path of Dirks van den Herve, which she just couldn't get there. It's the reverse pass. The run is left to right, and the ball is then straight as Carlina van der Herve just cuts from right to left. And it's that exchange of angle and direction that causes defences the most problem. Italy struggling with the high press. Zandavart steals possession back for the Netherlands. To be fair to Italy, they're still throwing people forward. Oh, they nearly got unpicked. They're still throwing people forward when they win the ball back. Their back divisions looks like they're playing a 4-4, leaving two attackers very high for looking for the long ball. Casali was a heavy touch, and then she gave Lurink a bit of a push. Lurink is... Slow to get to her feet. Fell, I think, rather awkwardly on her wrist, maybe. This is not good news for the Netherlands. And I think this looks fairly serious. That's a finger. Finger on right hand. That's... Yeah, we don't <laughs> need to get a close-up of that. Yeah, she's... There'll be a dislocation or a break in there, unfortunately. So Lauren Lurie will make her way to the medical staff. Probably when she just looked at it, just feeling a little bit nauseous. Oh, you would, wouldn't you? Drilled into the deep. No touch, though, from the Netherlands. Sali falls backwards again. Given away into the circle come the Netherlands. Good block initially, leader by Velton. Good save, Chirico. Still alive, though, being kept alive by Van Marla. And then taken away. Strong blast on the whistle. Great first block at the top of the circle for then the ball to come in. Chirico with her hands across her body. Good left-hand deflection as it's cut underneath from Lidovai Velton. That's great reverse stick execution. Lidovai Velton, there were some stats came out on the Hoof class where she was the, not only the highest scorer, but also the most assists. So that is a phenomenal effort to be the top scorer and create for other players around you. Three hit goes the way of Kitty Van Marla. Well, that's the third pass that's been distributed by the fullback straight towards the top of the circle with no but no blue shirt between it. De Gerda trying to get around the back. And she ran out of space. Well, onto the reverse, just trying to bobble that along and then the ball doesn't fall kindly, she overruns it. Mirabella. Loses possession again in Lidovai Velton. Baseline across the face of goal. Chirico with a good block. And that was a great tackle coming in from Eugenia Bianchi. Brave tackling back. Lidovai will go one hand to get it across. Knows she can get the rotation in. Then Vermala has time, doesn't know the chase defenders there. Bianchi. Here come the Netherlands again. Jonka plays it out now to Van Heffen. Oh, a nice little slip. Chirica caught, caught between her legs, but she did well to keep that out from Laura Nunning. Unfortunately, has conceded another penalty corner. Oh, Chirica doing brilliantly just to get in the way from a close shot. Ball rotating across, there is the shot, she just gets her thighs together, allows that to thud off the padded shorts, and then the awareness for the second clearance kick. Kitty 
Matty Van Marla. As you head down to the baseline. Marseca and Van den Assen wait at the top of the circle. Well, they try a different routine. De Gerda slaps it low. Chirico saves the rebound. Gets hammered in by Kitty Van Marla. That's her second of the match, but it's way, way better than the first. What a finish that is. So, a, a, a whipped injection out to Eva de Hoda. She's got so much time. Good save from Chirico, but what a takedown and finish from Vamala. Italy's defence protecting the tip-ins because of the routine. There's nothing that Chirico can do there. Her left hand goes up after the ball's hit the top corner. Absolutely middled it. Oh, the control as it came back to her from Chirico was also to be admired, but the finish was absolutely explosive. So Italy now seven goals to one down as Casali looks to break forward. She wanted to play on and the crowd wanted Italy to play on as well. As the free hit now means that the Netherlands can get all their players behind the ball. Back to the captain, Chiara Tiddy. Pacina, in it goes, just one kick off the turf. Long corner again, though. Took a deflection off a Dutch stick. Laconi is lurking. So too is Vinaradova inside the circle. They just need to get the ball in there and hope they can find one. The Bracconi again is just getting in a little bit of an arm tussle there. Certainly a little bit of a shove from Lauren Stamp. Just at the bottom of your screen. Short pass, trying to turn. And it goes out of play off the stick of Casale. And here we see the top goal scorers in the tournament. Kitty Van Marla now with that goal. That takes her to the top of the table. The Sable with two, of course, uh, first hat trick in the tournament yesterday against Japan. She's up there in second place. And, and look at the Dutch Velton, Jonker, and Matler, all with three. Well, 21 goals for in three games. That's pretty impressive pull stats so far with 18 minutes still to go of this one. Yes, indeed, as Matler plays it to the baseline, across the face of goal. The deflection was there from Jonker, but it was taken away from goal. Well, the Dutch have scored a brace of those tip-ins from that left-hand side attack. So far this game, the reverse stick across to far post. Just felt the Jonker had overrun that across the face of Chirico's goal. The thing that pleases me as well is none of the penalty corner drag flickers are up there in the top scorers. It's nice to see proper field goals dominating. Well, it's a lovely little reverse ball in. It possibly needed to go across first time if it was going to get to Jonker. She led tight into the near post. So we're getting very close to 100 goals in the tournament. This is match 22, we're up to 94 now. Into the circle, comes Van Marla again, she's looking for a penalty corner. Play on is the call, but the Dutch are going to refer it. I don't think this will take long. Can you check for food? Yes, I'll check for you. They're looking for the foot. There's the foot. Emmy, I have a decision for you. It hits an Italian foot in the circle. You can restart with a penalty corner and Netherlands keep their referral. Okay, thank you. You're absolutely right. Alison Keogh from Ireland agreeing with you, Simon. Certainly it looked fairly certain the way every single Dutch player went up and Chiara Tiddy's facial expression I think she'd have got away with much with her mother. And yet another penalty corner, the 11th now for the Netherlands in this match. And Anasim comes to Stam. 
Stan will drive it towards goal. It's missed the first time. Driven home the second time by Matt. The goal has been given, but Italy... Chiara Tilly is, she's arguing, is she going to referral? She's got a referral. No, not too late, too late. Okay, it's too late now. Chiara Tilly suggesting that the first swing and a miss, there was a swing and a miss in the circle. So as it comes in, it's charged down by the number one runner, then falls clear to the Netherlands, comes in, Chirica makes a good save. That, however, is irrelevant. Whilst it is a swing and a miss, there is no defender anywhere near that to be influenced by the swing. To be looking here, nobody flinches, nobody moves. That's not dangerous, that is a great finish. In, right foot save, clearance. Keetles playing at it and misses, and then Mackler. Back foot, weight is backwards, driven through onto the backboard. I think Matt, I thought, Cadles, if you're going to miss this, I'm not. Absolutely drilled home. I think Tiddy was probably aware of that. She was just frustrated at conceding another goal. She probably knew there was no defender, there was no danger. And that's why she didn't go with the referral. No, she did have a little sneaky look across to the bench to see if she was getting any instructions, but that's that's good awareness. I understand why she was upset. There was a swing and a miss, but you have to realise that that's not the skill problem. It's whether it becomes dangerous and players react to that miss. Well, the Netherlands continue their march forward in this tournament. What a record they've had in the World Cup. They've won it seven times, been second four, third once and they've only finished out tied the top three on one occasion. Do you know when that was, Simon? No idea. They came sixth in 1994. They're one of only three teams to have played in every single Women's Hockey World Cup. Germany and the Netherlands are the other two. And at the moment, they are really enjoying themselves here in London. Lovely turn from Matt, that Releases to the top of the D, and there is another goal for them. Dirks van den Hervel gets her second of the match. What a celebration if she could get a hat-trick in her 200th game, and it becomes 9-1 now to the Netherlands. Wow, she's got so much time, just backs away into space, defender gets ball-focused, Nobody's even interested in getting anywhere near Dirks of Van der Herbel. Well, she goes absolutely through that. Front foot, weight forwards, wallop into the bottom corner. Chilico just doesn't have legs long enough to get out there. That was my thoughts exactly. If ever there was a time she wished she was six foot, that was it. Well, to be fair, the goal that Van Marla scored, the rebound corner, I think she wanted to be two foot because you don't want that one hitting you in the face from two yards. I'm saying that, Chirico, she has made some great saves in this match. We've still got 15 minutes to go. You're going to have to start thinking about your vitality player of the match. Well, the hooter goes, and that is the end of the third quarter. It's been another four goals for the Netherlands in that 15-minute spell. What does Alison Annan say to her players? Netherlands 9, Italy 1 at the end of the third quarter. Well, this was the first goal after the half-time break. Dirks van den Hervel was the one to pants and fired it in. It was a good save from Chirico. A, a good block initially, rather, and then it just fell to Dirks van den Herbel. Great composure to finish with an open blade. Then an offset corner. Eva de Hoge coming in, opening her wrist. This was a great take. What a finish from Van Marla. Changes all of the angles, looking for the tip in. Italy resisted going high. Chirico with a decent left foot save for Van Marla. Take down and finish. Well, and then, if you can hit it hard, I can hit it hard. It comes back this time, air swing from Cadles, and Matler goes bang into the backboard. Well, Cadles open hand, a Gretzky-style ice hockey slap. Matler wasn't interested in the first instance, but then still open hand, have got some good power. And then the last goal, it was Matler, laid it to the top of the circle, Dirks van den Herbel, and she just put it out of the reach of Chirico to make it nine.
Uh, Van Marla and Dirk van der Herbel competing for the cleanest hit of the day, both of which dispatched with power. Italy, pictures of concentration, so too the Dutch then enjoying themselves, I'm sure, but this is business. She'll remember this 200th game, I'm sure. Two goals. Can she get a hat-trick in the last 15 minutes? And Marla is also looking to try and get one as the Netherlands start this final quarter, leading by nine goals to one. Well, that's just what you don't want as a team that is on the back end of a very, very, very disappointing scoreline for the Italians as you get the ball that it, orange wave that steps forward a high three person attacking line in front of you with the midfield stepping in behind well the other thing when you consider Simon they hadn't conceded a goal coming into this game I'm sure Korea and China will be looking at this Nice little leave in midfield. Just wondering, do you know the highest score for a Women's World Cup game? Off the top of, of my statistics? head, I don't, I'm afraid. I'm suspecting it would be around 10-1, I think, I'm going well, to go for. I'm pretty sure you had a conversation I've ever heard that it's something like 10-1. For some reason, I recall Nigeria being involved, but I might be wrong about that. But the scoreline, certainly, I think you mentioned a 10-1. Having to defend again. Been a really tough day for the Italians, ranked 17 in the world. Should say again, lowest ranked team in the tournament. So they've done well to get the crossover stage, winning both their opening games. They've defeated China 3 0 and Korea 1 0. When they met in the Hockey World League semi finals 2015, it was 9 0 then. So at least they got a goal today. Can they get a second? That's the question. Stolen by Ketels. Just the spring, not surprisingly, gone a little bit out of their step as De Gerda looks up. What, what a, pass. a pass to Lidavai Velton. Velton cuts infield, top of the circle, backhand. Good save by Chirico again. Well placed. Oh, the quality of that reverse pass. Diagonal, 45 degrees left, half to right midfield. Here we see it, this is absolutely delightful. Front edge, dead flat, bang on the end of a teammate's stick. Beautiful cut in field, space at the top and backhand, and a good save to finish. Stam now towards Chirico, but Marla oh! over the top. Oh! That is class to complete your hat trick. Kitty Van Marla just lobbing it over the top of Chirico. Well, Alison Allen knew about scoring goals, but she'd love that one. 10 out of 10, Kitty Van Marla. Well, how deliberate it is, I don't know, but she's played at that, to be fair. To get on the ball is class. To just soften your hands enough, pulled out of the left hip, she's jumped at it, she's looped it over to Nico. It's a great finish. I think she knew exactly what she was doing there, Simon. So, oh, two hat-tricks in two days we've seen now. Well, there we go, we've just been advised the highest score previous to this, you were right, Simon, Nigeria. And it was West Germany 9, Nigeria 0, back in 1976, the last time these two met at a World Cup, and now this 10-goal scoreline is a record for the Women's World Cup. Well, I'd love to be able to claim my own knowledge about Nigeria, but I, I definitely heard you probably chatting about it with Charlie Broom or other lead comms. Well, Charlie was the man who came to the rescue there, just to confirm what the scoreline was. So thanks, Charlie. I was right with the 10-1 at the moment, anyway. Oh, 
We were looking at it the other day, I have to admit, just to see what the score was. I just couldn't remember off the top of my head. Well, it was at the beginning of the tournament when the Netherlands raced out to that early lead. Everybody was suddenly going, this could be a rout. It didn't. They took their foot off the gas a little bit, and I think Alisson Allen will be happier with this performance. Oh, Van Keffen found brilliantly by Stam. She advances into the circle, looks to lay it back. First time shot, though, this time from Van Mala. A little bit below par by her standards. Oh, Van Mala doing a oh, that's a lovely slap. Van Geffen's first touch lets the ball across her body to get her eyes up. Look at the scan, still there, allowing the ball to go. Van Mala leading across a tired defender. Italy, though, haven't given up yet. They're trying to come forward with Sacchino. She loses out. Maybe just a little bit reliant on individual skills at the moment when they need to play more as a team. That's what's led to their success in the tournament. Looking to turn now on the flank was Ruggieri. She plays it forward. This is better from Italy as they come forward again. Free hit, one just outside the D by Pacella. By Baralska. That was Vinaradova. Sorry, my apologies there. Vinaradova just giving it away after they'd fought so hard to get in that position. Brought down by Pesina. Here come Italy again into the feet. Good play from Ruggieri. Nice little skill from Ruggieri. That little dink on the reverse just to get the ball up over a flat stick. Tackle in front of her. Here she is again, Ruggieri wins the penalty corner for Italy. Now can they get a second goal? Well, it's a clean drive in, and that's just an ugly tackle. It's the body shape as well, never really leading in in the right manner. Ruggieri. The nickname is La Chula, the cool. Very cool. That as Tiddy waits. Wybarowska is also at the top of the circle. Ruggieri, who won the penalty corner, will be the player to inject for Italy. Steps into it. It's a little bit wide, picked up well, hit towards goal, and a little bit too high, unfortunately, from Jasbir Singh. Got to say, a little bit wide is fairly generous. It's probably about two metres away from where it needed to be. Jasbir Singh steps into this, but gets under it. And the Netherlands straight away on an attack, and it's going to go in. Kelly Yonka has managed to get it deflected past Chirico. From one end to the other, and the Netherlands get another goal. Yonka gets her second. Well, the counter-attack was devastating. Vandervaart getting her body round, getting it across. It's a little bit ugly in the middle. Just takes a touch off a defender's stick in front of the goalkeeper. She goes to back her. That's really well done off a rotated blade. It's not an edge of a hit. It's a face of the ball onto the ball in the air. Well, this will be a day that Martina Chirico will want to forget in a hurry. Nothing she can do. Every 2017 was the best goalkeeper at the Euros indoors, Chirico. Incredibly, she played tennis before the tennis club closed down and then she took up hockey. So we just had confirmation West Germany 10, Nigeria 1. So we were was the score before this is now officially the highest ever scoring game in a world cup 78 was that 10-1 as italy trying to pounce through oviedo oh, and vedendor couldn't have made that look any more casual as she just booted it along the sideline so 10-1 i actually wasn't too far off with that But just from the side, it just came off the stick of Jasbir Sink. Still seven and a half minutes left in this match. 
really has been a very tough day for Italy. And I'm sure they will learn a great deal from this game. Yeah, the lowest ranked team and they've stolen possession now. Ruggieri makes a good run forward. Oviedo again, a little bit slow in support. Ruggieri's on her own. Looking to go around the back, just helped over the baseline. Long corner won by her. Records being broken here, there, and everywhere today. Traverso just losing out to De Gerda. And De Gerda again comes up with the ball for the Netherlands. Simon, you just had another stat you just showed me, which is even more remarkable. Yes, indeed. Again, it's Charlie Broom sitting behind the scenes, counting the numbers. But yeah, so the Netherlands so far have scored 25% of all of the goals in this competition so far. 7-7-11 seven, seven, is 25. Out We're of up the, to 98. 98, there we go. So over 25% of the goals in this competition. That is remarkable. Six scorers in this match. Wonder whether that might even be a record as well. I'm sure there might have been... Seven scorers in one match. As you know, Charlie's not got his feet up with a cup of tea. Well, it'd be great if Italy could find a second just before the end. You've got to think about your vitality player of the match soon as De Gerda makes a run forward. Comes to the top of the circle. Shooting the ball was leader by Velton. But I was just going to ask you, Simon, Roberto Carto, obviously this is quite a hammering for Italy. They've been on such a high with their performances in this tournament. Will this be a body blow? Will he have to lift his players? Or do you think they would have expected this to be a very, very difficult game? Uh, to be honest, it depends how, to be honest, it depends how honest he is with his players. Because world rankings, despite how well they've played, they haven't dominated games, they played well. And therefore, in this situation, this was always the danger because the Dutch have been outstanding in every game so far. The Hurda creating a little bit of space for herself, looking to play it round the back for Matla. So as long as Carter is honest and he evaluates all of the performance and he takes the emotion away from it, strip it back, what you did well, what you did badly, and what did the Netherlands do that you simply can't control? And if you take all of that out, there's some stuff in here that actually is very positive. I'm sure as Lidovai Velten picks up, good run of end by Kitty van Marla to the back post. I think you have to look at the programmes as well, how much hockey the Dutch players have, and again, a lot of these players for Italy have given up their jobs for six months to concentrate on the World Cup, and that's why it's been such a great story to see them go to the crossover games. Have you come up with any thoughts on the player of the match? Well, what we do when we get one is it goes to the truck so they can get some shots of the player of the match. And my initial response when I put my finger on the button was, can you get shots of the entire Netherlands team? They suggested we didn't have enough cameras to cut to all 11 people. So I'm going to have to narrow it down slightly. Well, Italy are on the attack at the moment. Can they find a second goal? Traverso to Casali. Casali takes a tumble. Close attention there from Laura Nuni. One corner is what they've won. I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. As Italy go on the attack again. The fans find their voice. Comes back to Chiara Tiddy. Out wide onto the right hand side, smashed across the circle. Unfortunately, no one there for Garafo's pass. And Traverso made that really easy for the umpire and then didn't move out of the way. I think in a game with a little bit more tension in it, that would have been a card, given the other cards that we've seen. Didn't make any effort to look at the umpire. Must have known the three it was against her. And I have to say, I think that was sensible umpiring at this point in the game. 
to be gained by a yellow card for that. Carter, lovely little skills shown by her. Comes back to Jasbir Singh. Tiddy now looking up to see what's ahead. Pulls one up the middle of the park. Good work from Mirabella. Finds Singh. That's a good pass from her. Singh looking to cut in field. Van Heffen blocking it as she ran towards the D. Wry smile on the face of Van Heffen. Played on quickly. Deflection. Bracconi lively as ever. Long corner. Traverso. Be good for Italy to finish on a high with a goal if they can do it. Tiddy shaped to slap that into the circle. Offloads it to Wybarowska. She hits it towards the deep. The Kurda. Left by Matla. Zandavard. Wybarowska should get there, but Tiddy comes back and helps and does get it. Stolen back though by Van Heffen. Wybarowska did bet well. Sali. Well, Simon, have you got sorted it out in your head? I have indeed, and whilst it would be... Well, it is easy to extol the virtues of the entire Netherlands team today because they've been outstanding pretty much in every channel. For me, the Vitality player of the match is going to be the Netherlands. Number four, Kitty van Mahler. Uh, she got the second hat-trick of the it tournament. Was it was fine. As Mirabella still tries to go on the attack. Wonderful defending there from Laura Nunning. Into the corner she goes. Just running the clock down. Italy just poke it over the baseline. So 16-2 the Netherlands. They'll take their time taking it, and I'm sure they'll launch it long and high. Well, Quite still, so high, but long. Still trying to add to what is incredible stats of 48 circle entries for the Netherlands and 38 shots. Chirico, the poor Italian goalkeeper, not to blame for this result in any way, shape or form. It's been an outstanding Dutch attacking performance. And Mahler's made a run forward. Surely she's not going to get another. Katels plays it into the path of Van Heffen. It went too far ahead of her. Jonker will pick up. Laid into the path of Katels. Katels lays it there, and Van Mahler gets a four. N Netherlands get a 12th goal right at the end of this match. Well, what a sweeping move. Finished off brilliantly by Van Mahler. Well, actually, you said they couldn't get another, could they? Yes, they could. From the back, it was a missed touch in midfield, picked up and rolled in field, out to the far post. Van Marle in front of the goalkeeper, open hands, knew exactly what she needed to do. Gaitel's out, pulls back in the hook of her stick. Great execution, and Van Marle opens the hands and touches it into the top corner. <laughs> Alison Anand doesn't know what to do with herself. She doesn't. She smiles into her hands, doesn't want to show everyone just how much she's enjoyed the champagne hockey her team have performed today. Kitty Van Marler with four goals for the Netherlands. Alison Anand hugs and smiles on the bench. They continue their unbeaten run and a really strong march into the quarterfinals. Italy. Well, it was a really tough day at the office for them, but hopefully they will have learned a lot playing against the world number one. Not something they get to do very often. Dirks van den Hervel, she'll remember this. A record score in the World Cup on her 200th appearance for the Netherlands. Maybe a little bit of a worry there with the ice pack on, Lidabai Velten's shoulder. Hopefully nothing to worry about. Also hope the dislocated finger for Lurink has been put back into place and she'll be fine for the next match. What a performance by the Netherlands. The final score, Netherlands 12, Italy 1. Well, the crowd was certainly entertained in that match. They came in the rain and they were dazzled by the Netherlands. 24 goals is their goal difference. That is remarkable. Three wins from three games. Italy are through to the crossover. So too Korea, courtesy of their one old draw with China, just on goal difference there. But there's still more action coming your way today. We've got the 
India versus USA coming up and also England versus Ireland. Still plenty to ride on those two games as to who's going to finish in second and third. Ireland already through to the quarterfinals top of that pool. As we go down pitch side now to Krista Cullen. And I'm here with Kitty Van Marler, goal scorer of four goals today in this emphatic highest ever scoring game at a World Cup 12-1. Well done. And just tell me what it was like out there. Yeah, it was great and uh, it feels good. And uh, the best is that we play together and I make four goals, but it's because the teammates give me very good goals and I give the last touch. So I'm very happy. And the whole point of today was to go out there and you know, make sure you finish as top of your pool, which you did in that style. And now it's about progressing to the quarterfinals. Yeah, we have three days rest now and uh, we're going to prepare us for the quarterfinals. And uh, I think we are ready. And uh, yeah, let's go. Who's in confidence? Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.